That's why I'm running to win back that election and change his terrible policy. I just asked, I just asked on one question. Why didn't you do it in the eight years, a short time ago? Why didn't you do it? You just said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. You put tens because of thousands of mostly black young men in prison. Now you're saying you're going to get. Why didn't he do it? It's because, let's face it, Joe, what have you been focused on? Your own country. You've been at war with your own people. You've been at war with me. And so have you. And so that's why you haven't focused on a lot of things because your people have been busy with me instead of focusing on the rest of the world, instead of focusing on our country's security um, from external threats. Because let's face it, are we a threat to our own country? Of course not. We're for ourselves. I mean, I. it's not a coincidence that I got sent to the Middle East by the best friend of the guy who was in charge, he was the head spy to the Middle East. I mean, he was, uh, you can say that the head spy to Israel is not the head spy. It's the head spy. I mean, the rest of the Middle East, they're not the same as Israel. Israel is secular. Everyone else is very, very Muslim. And so all I'm saying is, um, we're not treating our, we're not treating our own people very well. That's my, I mean, obviously. You're going to undo that. Why didn't you get it done? You had eight years with Obama. You because, know why, Joe? Because you're all talk and no action. All right, Vice President because Biden, and then a, we're going to move on to the next section. We had a Republican Congress. That's the answer. Well, you okay. Gotta talk, you got to talk them into it, Joe. Sometimes all right. you got to talk them into it. We're going to move on to our next yeah. section, Like I did with criminal justice change. reform. Okay. I had to talk Democrats into it. Gentlemen, you we're, did we're, we're running out of done. time, so we got to get on to okay. climate change, please. You both have very different visions on climate change. President Trump, you say that environmental regulations have hurt jobs in the energy sector. Vice President Biden, you have said you see addressing climate change as an opportunity to create new jobs. For each of you, how would you both combat climate change and support job growth at the same time, starting with you, President Trump? Actually, it's going to start with me. The way that I would combat climate change is by not phrasing it uh, in terms of me combating climate change. I'm trying to make sure my society can survive post oil. I'm going to fight climate change by fighting our oil consumption. But I'm also, I mean, What's the best thing you can do for climate change is kill people. And I know that's the worst thing I could ever, 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 ever know. Because it's, I know it. It's not that I believe it. I know it. I know that the population of the world is the problem. I know that especially Americans are the problem because Americans just want to consume so much freaking oil on a per capita basis compared to the rest of the world. It's just the way that Americans are. They think they deserve it. And so I combat climate change by trying to talk Americans into changing their opinions. I would combat climate change by killing people, um, but not in my first four years unless I got congressional approval, unless I like had a reason, um, like a really good, like, a, like the, pretty much unanimous agreement from the Joint Chiefs of Staff that would give me a reason to go to war without Congress. But all I'm saying is I'm not gonna go do World War III without congressional approval, but that might be an issue for you guys because we have spies in Congress. If, you, if there's anything you should know is that we have a lot of interest in Congress that are, that are from the rest of the world. All right, so I would also combat climate change, like I said, by figuring out how to go off oil, which means um, building cities in the desert that are mega cities, that are hopefully pyramid cities, um, that use concentrated solar energy with no oil, no coal, no um, carbon emissions at all. They use water, and I would build a pipeline to, to Nevada to do it. Um, if you want to learn more about my ideas, um, check out my YouTube, and then go to plan, My Plan to Save the World, or I think that's what it's called, Plan to, plan to Save the Human Race. And then there's another one that's the follow-up video, video for that called Future Cities Part 1. And there are a bunch of them. It's probably like 40 minutes if you want to watch it. And it's my plan to save the planet. But my plan more than anything is to get Republicans on board. Because I can get them on board if I talk about the energy crisis. I can get them on board if I talk about how the Earth is, is only so big. There's only so much space in, on, on, in the planet, and it's there's only so much oil, there's only so much coal. We're only going to have so much no matter what. And we need to think about future generations. I know no one else wants to think about future generations because they're so freaking old. I do. I'm not trying to get out, get, get um, to the end of my presidency and not have my term matter. I want to get to the end of my presidency and have 50 years down the line matter because of what I do. So um, that I, I would actually combat climate change. No one else is actually going to combat climate change like me. You have two minutes uninterrupted. 
So uh, we have the Trillion Trees program. We have so many different programs. I do love the environment, but what I want is the cleanest crystal clear water, the cleanest air. We have the best, lowest number in carbon emissions, which is a big standard that I notice Obama goes with all the time. Not Joe. I haven't heard Joe use the term because I'm not sure he knows what it represents or means, but I have heard Obama use it. And we have the best carbon emission numbers that we've had in 35 years under this administration. We are working so well with industry, but here's what we can't do. Look at China, how filthy it is. I don't believe that. I think what you're trying to say is that we have the best carbon emission numbers per capita in 35 years. There's no, no way that we actually have the best carbon emission numbers in 35 years because there, we have so many more cars on the road right now and so many more homes and um, we, we consume more fuel now than we did 35. I, I just don't believe that. Uh, you, everyone else can look it up. Look at Russia. Look at India. It's filthy. The, the air is filthy. The Paris Accord, I took us out because we were going to have to spend trillions of dollars and we were treated very unfairly. When they put us in there, they did us a great disservice. They were going to take away our businesses. I will not sacrifice tens of millions of jobs, thousands and thousands of companies because of... If I sacrifice jobs for the sake of the planet, I'm gonna find a way to replace that job with another job. I'm very serious about replacing jobs. I am thinking about the United States as a pile of money. And that pile of money is our currency and our currency gets has leaks out of it that go into other countries. And, and those leaks can cause us to have to defend our currency and just because other people leak their currency into our money, into our people's government. And so all I'm saying is I think of our country as a big pile of money. And if that's the case, then um, all these people that have wasteful jobs can do another job and we're still going to have the same pile of money. I can change their effort. And I understand that everyone has this huge thing about communism. They're so afraid of planned economies, and what you need to understand is we do live in a planned economy. My people have planned this economy. We're very serious about planning this economy. There's a reason that we tricked so many people into shorting for like seven years. I know that my friends that are very wealthy people from other countries especially um, might be angry at me for tricking them into shorting so much, and I, I, it, wasn't, I, I, it was never my plan, honestly. But all I'm saying is that sort of thing um, helps our pile of money and... Um, I actually think about that sort of thing, and I think that we can move around our labor if we um, change the way we think about our economics. The Paris Accord. It was so unfair. China doesn't kick in until 2030. Russia goes back to a low standard, and we kicked in right away. It would have been, it would have been, it would have destroyed our businesses. So, you ready? We have done an incredible job environmentally. We have the cleanest air, the cleanest water, and the best carbon emission standards that we've seen in many, many years. Vice President. I've talked about it before. Donald Trump has made policies that assume that everyone in Michigan, or that assumes that all Americans live in Michigan. And um, sometimes um, when you set standards for dishwashers and stuff like that, um, the reason you need to set them with high um water protection standards is not because of Mi Michigan, which has the Great Lakes, or, 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 um, or Minnesota, which has, it's a, it's, it's a bunch of lakes also. Um, it's because of California. It's because, this, it's because of the place where everyone goes, and uh, everyone goes to Los Angeles, and that's what people don't understand about Los Angeles. It's overwhelmed by illegal immigrants. It's overwhelmed by people that want to be in the Los Angeles community. It's by pe it's overwhelmed by people that love the weather, and that means the water supply is overwhelmed. And the the water supply comes from Lake Mead, which is in Nevada, and that's why I've talked about building um, a desalination plant in Death Valley to use the sun to to purify water that we will then dump into Lake Mead, and um, no one else has talked about the water problem, and, and no one does talk about the water problem. Everyone wants to talk about climate change, and they talk about the water problem as a result of climate change. They don't talk about actually dealing with the water problem. I'm trying to find a technical solution. When I want to solve a problem, you know, you know what problem I wanted to solve when I was in grad school? I wanted to figure out how to stop hackers. I wanted to end hackers. You know what I did? I almost found a way to stop hackers. Like I, There were other people that were around me that knew it the whole time, but all I'm saying is I figured out how to stop, stop hackers because that was my mission.
I didn't have a technical background, but that was my mission. I wasn't about getting good grades. I was about beating hackers. And if I become president, my mission is making sure the United States can survive long term. No one else's mission is that. And we haven't destroyed our industries. Vice President Biden, two minutes to you uninterrupted. Climate change and climate warming, the global warming is an existential threat to humanity. We have a moral obligation to deal with it. And we're told by all the leading scientists in the world, we don't have much time. We're going to pass the point of no return within the next eight to 10 years. Four more years of this man eliminating all the regulations that were put in by us to clean up the climate, to clean up, to limit the, the uh, limited emissions will put us in a position where we're going to be in real trouble. Here's where we have a great opportunity. I was able to get both all the environmental organizations as well as labor, the people worried about jobs, to support my climate plan. Because what it does, it will create millions of new good-paying jobs. We're going to invest in, for example, 500,000 50,000, excuse me, 50,000 charging stations on our highways so that we can own the electric. Charging stations are important, and I believe that we should set standards for, for charging stations. A lot of people want to have like a million different plugs for the charging station at each charging station, or they want to have some charging stations that don't work for other, for, for some cars. I want to make sure that we have standards for charging stations. I think the world can get together and, and make a decision on what we're going to do as far as charging our cars. Um, because if we're going to go on electric cars, we need a way that all the cars can use the gas station, which isn't a gas station, it's a, it's a charging station. Um, also, um, I, I've already talked about how I'm so much for water, but I love university style living. I love walking communities. I love communities where people can eat together. I love communities where we figure out how to eliminate waste by um, planning better. And so that's why um, I'm so for um, changing the way we live. So when I'm talking about these um, pyramid cities that are desalination plants for desalinating water, they're also power plants. But um, more than anything, they're planned community, communities where um, people eat together because we use the, the sun to cook everyone's meals together. Like they're, it's, they're, they're planned meals um, that um, are all about making sure that you're not using, you're not, um, using natural gas and you're not using raw materials because there are only so many raw materials on the planet. Everyone always acts like, Oh, natural gas is going to save everything now. Oh, really? Always? No, no coal. Even coal will run out. I know you guys are like, well, we've had coal for almost 200 years. How in the world do you think we're going to run out of coal? Well, actually probably longer than that. I mean, I know that people were using coal way back in the day to do all sorts of things like forging probably armor and stuff like that. But I'm saying like, Power plants? Who invented the power plant? That was a that was a uh, 20th century invention. So uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, Thomas Edison, right? Um, so let's all like be real here. We have only had this technology for a very short amount of time. We need to stop stop acting like the technology is going to last forever. And that's why I'm for planning future cities that aren't about. Um, your brainwashing as a, I, I'm a Republican, I believe this, yes, I believe this, I'm a Democrat, I believe this, I, I'm going to nod my head and roll my eyes in the back of my head because I agree with you. Do, I, I, I need people to get outside of that box and think about their survival. So come and join my campaign and help me beat these guys. The electric car market of the future. In the meantime, China is doing that. We're going to be in a position where we're going to see to it that we're going to take four million existing billion buildings and two million existing homes and retrofit them so they don't leak as much energy, saving hundreds of millions of barrels of oil in the process and creating significant number of jobs. And by the way, the whole idea of what this is all going to do, it's going to create millions of jobs and it's going to clean the environment. Our health and our jobs are at stake. That's what's happening. And what right now, by the way, Wall Street firms indicated that my plan my, my plan will, in fact, create 18.6 million jobs, 7 million more than his. This is from Wall Street. And I'll create $1 trillion more in economic growth than his proposal does. Not on climate, just on the economy. President Trump, you're right. They came out and said very strongly, $6,500 will be taken away from families under his plan, that his plan is an economic disaster. 
If you look at what he wants to do, you know, the — if you look at his plan, Not, his environmental plan, you know who developed it? AOC plus three. They know nothing about the climate. I mean, she's got a good line of stuff, but she knows nothing about the climate. And they're all hopping through hoops for AOC plus three. Look, their real plan costs a hundred trillion dollars. If we had the best year in the history of our country, AOC has a perspective on the world that's far left. She's kind of like Che Guevara, and I mean that in a good way. Except she's not like Che Guevara. She's not as much of a fighter. Um, I, what I mean is that she's she's definitely um, she really likes the idea of the government owning everything. Um, even if the government isn't very good at doing anything because the government is all about, the government's all about kissing ass. Like how do you get ahead a lot of the time? You kiss the right asses. You push a certain way. You push into certain doors. You work into certain situations. I'm just saying like a lot of the time they could be people that you don't want to like. Um, and so um, that's not what I was talking about though. All I'm saying is just cause AOC is has a very specific world perspective doesn't mean that her world perspective doesn't care about the planet more than just about anyone else. And I'm one of those people too, that cares about the planet more than just about anything else. So, uh, I know her belief system. I know that my belief system is very different because I don't care if you're rich. She doesn't like rich people. I don't give a shit if you're rich, as long as you're not wasteful. Um, but I care about the planet just like she does. So, um, you can hate her because she is a, She's a straight ticket, ticket Democrat, but let's face it, I am. And I don't like being a straight ticket, ticket, ticket Democrat. It makes me feel like I'm anti-democracy. But you know what? My mom's a straight ticket Republican, and everyone's a straight ticket everything, which tells me you don't have a choice. And all I'm saying is I'm, I'm for democracy, and I, I, I hopefully AOC is. But more than anything, I'm for the planet, and that's why I think AOC should get on board with me. Last year in the history of our country, for 100 years, we would not even come close to a number like that. When he says buildings, they want to take buildings down because they want to make bigger windows into smaller windows. As far as they're concerned, if you had no window, it would be a lovely thing. This is the craziest plan that anybody has ever seen. And this wasn't done by smart people. This wasn't done by anybody. Frankly, I don't even know how it could be good politically. Right. They want to spend a hundred trillion dollars. That's their real number. He's trying to say it was six. It's a hundred trillion dollars. They want to knock down buildings and build new buildings with little, tiny, small windows. I mean, and many other things. Okay. And many other things. Let me have the vice president it respond. And we're crazy. running out of time, and we have a lot and more you'll questions to get our to. Country. So let's hear from the vice president. I have a number more questions. I don't know where he comes from. I don't know where he comes up with these numbers. A hundred trillion dollars. Give me a break. All right. Time to tell the truth. The reason they want to get rid of giant windows and get small windows is because of cooling costs and um and they're worried about like insulation like windows not being insulated and um the reality is probably if we had no windows um the heating we would we would have less carbon emissions and so sometimes um saving the planet's not a fun thing and so one thing i've talked about is not having fun while you're driving <laughs> so uh if we lower the speed limit to like 55 miles per hour on the interstates, we could drastic, drastically reduce oil consumption by I think like 30% or something like that. So as much as I don't like that idea, I feel like we need to, but then everyone's gonna speed, which means we need governors, but then everyone's gonna hate governors, which a governor is something that controls your speed of your car. I, don't, I know you can see it on my face, I don't enjoy talking about this. I don't like going, okay guys, um, I'm for not having the prettiest buildings ever because what's the, what are the prettiest buildings? They're glass buildings. And so if, if it's all glass, that's all window buildings. And those are the buildings that Trump's fighting for because Trump loves those buildings and Trump's kind of an architect. So that's why Trump feels so seriously about this. Um, and I agree with him that those are the prettiest buildings, but that's why I talked about building glass buildings indoors. So I'm talking, I've talked about these giant pyramid buildings that don't have windows on the outside. They have reflectors for concentrated solar energy. But on the inside, we can have glass buildings, beautiful glass buildings, buildings like the Frost Bank building in Austin. Um, I actually wanted to have um, a system where you can ride um, a ski lift to the top of the Frost Bank building from the side of the pyramid 
and then you can take the elevator down because I wanted straight up and down pyramids in the pyramid because when you build uh, pyramids, you have to have sideways, ele sideways elevators, which makes them super slow. And I like fast elevators if I'm in a giant building and so does Donald Trump, I promise. So if we're going to, so if we're going to have this, this giant, so I was thinking, yeah, if we're going to have up and down elevators, straight up and down, we could have like a beautiful frost bank type building in the middle of a pyramid, but we could have a lot of different styles of buildings, but that's why I'm just saying like, we can build glass buildings indoors, but we do need to think about the planet when we build buildings in the future. Give me a break. This plan was, um, this is plan is endorsed by every major, every major environmental group and every labor group, labor, because they know the future lies. The future lies in us being able to breathe and they know their good jobs and getting us there. And by the way, the fastest growing industry in America are, is, is, is the electric, the, uh, excuse me, uh, solar energy, and wind. He thinks wind causes cancer, windmills. It's the fastest growing jobs, and they pay good prevailing wages, 45, 50 bucks an hour. We can grow and we can be cleaner if we go the route I'm proposing. My family owns a wind farm in South Texas. I, I've talked about how my family, we're farmers, we grow cotton. We also um, farm wind. So on our cotton farm, we, we, we're in the wind business. So I'm all about uh, wind farms. Um, I know that um, the, the right likes to complain about them being ugly. Donald Trump hates how, I just can't stand how ugly the, the spinny thing is. I want to be able to see the ocean. And I understand um, why he believes that. It's because he buys property f for their views and it matters to him if he has a view. And I, I, it matters to me if I have a view. But I don't mind seeing wind turbines in the distance. Um, I think they're very important. In Texas, um, we are actually the number one wind producer in the world, and no one actually knows that. Everyone thinks Texas is all about oil. We're actually all about wind, too, because um, up in, that, in the panhandle area, it's crazy windy. But wind depends on wind, and you can't use it everywhere. President Trump, Excuse me. please we respond, energy, and then I have to follow We are follow energy up. independent for the first time. We don't need all of these countries that we had to fight war over because we needed their energy. We are energy independent. I know more about wind than you do. Oh. It's extremely expensive, kills all the birds. It's very intermittent. It's got a lot of problems. And they happen to make the windmills in both Germany and China. And the fumes coming up, if you're a believer in carbon emission, the fumes coming up to make, make these massive windmills is more than anything that we're talking about with natural gas, which is very clean. One other thing. Find me a scientist solar. said that. I love solar, but solar doesn't quite have it yet. It's not powerful yet to, to really run our big, beautiful factories that we need to compete with the world. So False. it's all a pipe dream. But you know what? We'll Wind energy is freaking awesome. So you can say whatever you want about wind energy. Wind energy is freaking awesome. But like I said before, it really depends on being somewhere that's super windy and um, not everywhere where can use it. And um, you need to be near, like the problem with electricity is you have to be near um, a transmission station. So there are different, there's like where the electricity is generated and then there's a transmission station for like long distance transmissions and then there's shorter distance transmission stations. And so um, for, for that sort of thing, all I'm saying is you have to be within close proximity to the windmills. And so that's why um, none of the solutions are, are going to solve the problem. But the fact that you don't want to embrace the wind solution is like the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. What we'll do, we're going to have the greatest economy in the world. But if you want to kill the all economy, right. get rid of your oil industry. You want and, and what about fracking? All right, now, let me, now let me, have, let me allow fracking. Vice President I Biden to respond. I never said I oppose fracking. Y you said it I, on tape. I did. Show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. The fact of the matter is Show he's flat lying. I've said I oppose fracking before, but um, that was not now. I, I agree with fracking. I'm all about the oil industry, but I'm for uh, not having to frack until we need to frack. I'm for leaving the oil in the ground until we need to use the oil. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm all about using the oil. I'm, I'm for using every single drop of that oil. I promise if there's anybody that's for making sure that we use every single drop and then other people's drops, we're going to go take Saudi drops of oil. We're going to take Iran's drops of oil. We're going to go take people's oil. That's my plan is I'm, I'll freaking go take, um, Libya's oil too. You think I'll, I'll go take whoever, whoever's freaking oil I want. 
along with my friends, we're going to go take Russia's oil. Russia only has 100 years of oil left. I'll take that 100 years. That's fine with me. So um, I'm all about oil, but I'm also very about other types of fuel. Lying. Would you rule out banning fracking? I do rule out banning fracking because the answer, we need, we need other industries to transition to get to ultimately a complete zero emissions by 2025. What I will do with fracking over time is make sure that we can capture the emissions from the fracking, capture the emissions from gas. We can do that, and we can do that by investing money and doing it. But it's a transition to that. I have one more question excuse in me, this pod, and then we, me, we have- he was against- What this administration has done has fast-tracked like every fracking um, plan, every uh, oil and gas exploration plan, everything possible. They are all about fast-tracking. And the problem with fracking is what they do is they um, inject a bunch of um, water, like tons and tons of water. It has to be purified water. It can't be salt water. And it's there are a bunch of chemicals in it. And the reason it's called fracking is it's hydraulic fracturing. So it's breaking the rock to release um, this type of oil, which is extra light, sweet, crude oil. And um, Donald Trump has expedited the process of um, building these fracking wells. And um, it, they also need to use fracking sand. I can't remember why. Uh, it's, it's a complicated, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not explaining fracking. What I'm trying to explain is um, that um, when you expedite the process of um, digging these fracking wells, you also risk contaminating important water supplies. And I saw that there's been um, some fast-tracked um, oil and gas exploration projects done in Southern Colorado. And my understanding is that Southern Colorado is a major uh, source of water for a lot of the United States. And, um, you know, the Colorado River, you know, when we talk about Lake Mead, when we talk about uh, Los Angeles water supply, where does it come from? It comes from here. It's like unbelievable how much water comes from here. And so... Um, we need to be careful because we don't want to ruin our water supply by making too many handshake deals, buying closed doors to get money so that you can run um, campaign ads talking crap about Joe Biden all the time. Yeah. He was against fracking. He said it. I will show that to you tomorrow. I Good. am against fracking. Until he got the nomination, went to Pennsylvania, then he said, but you know what, Pennsylvania? He'll be against it very soon because his party is totally against fracking it. Fracking on federal land, I said. No fracking you and said or fracking. oil on federal land. Let me ask this final question in this section, and then I want to move on to our final section. President Trump, people of color are much more likely to live near oil refineries and chemical plants. In Texas, there are families who worry the plants near them are making them sick. Your administration has rolled back regulations on these kinds of facilities. Why should these families give you another four years in office? Uh, the families that we're talking about are employed heavily, and they're making a lot of money, more money than they've ever made. If you look at the kind of numbers that we produce for Hispanic, for Black, for Asian, it's nine times greater the percentage gain than it was under in three years than it was under eight years of the two of them, to put it nicely. Nine times more. Now, somebody lives, I have not heard the numbers or the statistics that you're saying, but they're making a tremendous amount of money economically. We saved it. And I saved it again a number of months ago when oil was crashing because of the pandemic. Okay. We saved it. We got, say what you want about relationship, we got Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Russia to cut back way back. We saved our oil industry, and now it's very vibrant again. Right. And everybody has very inexpensive gasoline. Remember Vice that. President Biden, your response, and then we're going to have a final question for both of you. The reason everyone has gasoline right now is because technological progress has advanced so much in the mining industry. So we have been, so, so, so that technology has allowed us to um, extract more oil than ever. So, um, we, so um, that is the case in a lot of mining industries where we have a lot of raw materials, but as we have the gift of mining, mining machines and mining technology, um, progress in favor of us, um, 
we also need to be aware that just because you can extract it from the ground doesn't mean you need to. Just because you can get the oil out doesn't mean you need to. Why do we need to pull it out? The re I know you guys are thinking, well, why don't we just pull it out, put it in storage? Because you have to put it in giant steel containers. Do you realize that um, each year the world consumes over a trillion gallons of oil every single year? I'm talking a, a trillion. Think about how. Think about that in terms of jugs of milk. A trillion of those. That's coming out of the planet every single year. And so um, we need to be aware of that. And so um, that's why I'm all about cutting back on oil consumption. More than anything, I love, I love planting trees. I love thinking about um, um, how to replace coal, but I really want to figure out how, how to deal with the oil problem.